Hi, I'm Rob Cram, and today we're taking a look at the game creators, Game Guru, the easy game maker. Um, I'm not going to beat around the bush, um, but firstly, I am going to state that I am a very, very, very casual uh, map maker. Um, I'm not someone who's interested in coding and doing all sorts of tinkering with options and sliders and the rest of it. So this game sort of piqued my interest. It was originally, I think, the first person creator and it's kind of morphed itself into Game Guru. So I'm just going to quickly talk through the basics um, from my limited knowledge of the game. So here you've got a blank map. Um, and you can see there's a quite a nice texture detail. Um, you can raise the terrain and create mounds, hills, uh, increase the size of the cursor, which is quite straightforward. You can then flatten these as well to create kind of plateaus or even um, shapes. You can create slopes, which is quite easy to do. And you can um, set a specific height for smoothing the landscape. So that's quite kind of a basic um, overview of the tools. You can then sort of paint different textures. Uh, this is a kind of gravelly texture. And you can also um, paint various kind of um, other textures that you discover when you enter the actual map itself so even though it looks kind of bright green um, this is just to, to show you that an area that you've painted and that you can adjust various kind of texture details once you're in the map which is quite cool so that's kind of like a basic on the the terrain obviously you can um, do a lot more if i go back to the that you can create kind of lakes uh, the main thing is you want to think about is adding kind of props so there's a whole load of props that you can add here's a quick rundown of what you can do using various different styles uh, i will say that although there's a lot here um depending on what you want to do you do have to buy more from the the website if you want to have a, a wider bank of um, stuff to add so let's just say we'll add this banana tree to our map. We can just plop those in there. Um, and we'll do um, another banana tree, different type around our kind of oasis. And then we can sort of add um, some rocks maybe. Just add those around. Now, once you've um, included a prop on the map, you can then rotate it around to suit it's quite easy to do um, you can even change its size and shape by stretching it or increasing its height and you can do that with pretty much any prop that's available including uh, the ai so that's a basic of um adding sort of props i mean i'll just quickly go back to buildings and i'll add a shed as well just to give it a bit more there you go you've got a few sheds in there and then um you know i can make a road so if i just shrink the size of the tool i can then use that to create sort of pathways obviously i'm just doing it very quickly just to give you an idea So there's my kind of path leading around this oasis. There you go. So that's quite straightforward. I mean, that's taken me a few minutes just to do that. Obviously, if you're putting a lot more thought into things and adding a lot more props, um, then it's going to take you a lot longer. So I'll just add a few tents just to um, populate the map a bit more. So that just gives you a basic idea of um, adding props to the map. Um, again, if you want to sort of spend the time 
tailoring the terrain, then you can do so. So I'm going to quickly just add a border of a, a mountainous range. I mean, the longer you hold your hand on the map, let's just zoom out, the more intense it becomes. So those are actually quite large hills surrounding the map here. And if I keep my hand pressed on it, it suddenly turns into that rock formation automatically to uh, indicate the height. Right. So what we can do at any time is just jump into the map and um, check it out. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly add a player start point and I'll put that on the path here. And you can then just select its properties and change some of its starting stats. So I'll give it an Uzi to start off with. That's quite good. It's got three lives and a certain amount of health. Give it a thousand ammo. Apply those changes. And we're all set to jump in. So we'll just jump in quickly. Now, when you test the map, you're then able to select um, a lot of different lighting options. And as I said before, the texture detail on that painted area that we, we did. So there you can see the um, light reflection and the uh, of, of the water. See our props that we've added. And there's our sort of mountainous range surrounding us. So it's all pretty kind of basic stuff and that's done in literally a few minutes. But obviously there's just us here on the map. There's no AI added. So for a basic, quick sort of multiplayer map or a single player map, uh, you, this is kind of what you can do in very short space of time. Now, remember the green stuff that we painted on the map that looked like loads of green spray paint? Well, this is the texture detail. It's that kind of foliage. So if we bring up our menu now, this gives us a bit more of an idea. Let me just turn around so we can see that from this angle. Um, this gives us more options to play around with. So the terrain shader, for example, um, or sorry, the vegetation type is what we were painting on. So we can change it now to grass, as you can see that wasteland weedy so that gives you that nice kind of options from what you've painted on the main map change that to icy lushy so you've got all these kind of options which are quite cool which affect all of the painted areas that you've um added so we'll just keep it at grass at the moment and now we can change the actual overall terrain level so that's desert Change that to ice. The brightness is a bit bright at the moment. We can just tone that down a bit. And here you can also change the um, sky, put it on cartoon, golden, nighttime. Let's put that brightness back up again. And um, let's change that back to um, wasteland. So you get a better view of the sky moon cloud whoops a bit quick there red sky so you get an idea of what you can do and obviously they've got all these other options change the levels of fog um color overall ambience etc so we just come out of there so that gives you a basic overview of some of the more detailed options that you can do to your map so obviously i've changed this now to a bit more of a, a desert um, location to fit the Oasis theme. So going one step further, if we, um, we can actually edit in this particular mode, but we'll head back into the main sort of overview, map overview screen. And here now we can sort of go to our entities and start adding sort of AI characters. Now there are very few characters at the moment. Uh, obviously you can buy more. So we select the Defender and we can dot these around the map in various places. Um, Combat Mutant, 
No, just litter the whole map with enemies, and there you've got your kind of basic um, gun fest of everyone attacking you. So, just to go into a bit more detail, if we select a different uh, shotgun defender, or oh no, Uber Soldier. We select the Uber Soldier. We'll stick him here as an example. Now, what we can do is we can go into his properties. We can like have a look at him close up. This is the Uber Soldier. Now, you see on the left, there's various kind of things that you can tweak. You can tweak his speed, um, his range of view, and his sort of AI behavior. So he's constantly... Um, so he can be a melee fighter. He can run at you. He can take cover. Um, you know, there's lots of AIs that you can use here. So we'll just make him a cover AI. So that's one easy way. In 10 minutes, I've managed to populate the map, put in a few props. Um, it's not exactly a game per se, but if you just want to mess around with stuff, then uh, it's quite easy just to quickly do stuff. And then you can share that with your friends. That's also is a good thing about this, is being able to upload it for anyone to play. They don't need to have a copy of the game. <clears throat> you can even have um, multiplayer maps and have them hosted. So there's our Uber soldier. And there you've got your quick first person shooter. You can put regenerating health. But you get the idea. That's kind of very basic. So if we now come out of here and I'll load up um, one of the maps that's pre-made. Um, this is one of the maps that I've made and I've spent quite a lot of time building it. I mean, literally, I don't know, over 10, 15 hours, possibly more, um, creating this map. Um, it was originally starting out to be a kind of medieval village. And here you can just get a quick overview of the number of props I've done. So I've basically added a, a kind of town complete with its own marketplace, housing, um, storage area, another market here. I've sort of gotten into quite a lot of detail in adding um, the props to it and the church with its own graveyard and such like. So if we just jump in and we'll just show you how that looks once you're actually into the map. We'll just have a quick walk around. So that has taken me quite a number of hours to um, add that. Now I will say that the it is kind of fiddly to um, add props when you're trying to do precise um placement of props uh, it's not impossible to work with but it is fiddly and could be a bit better uh, i will say this is an early access title and will sort of get better but i found doing very simple things taking much longer than they should be based on the fact that um things were just a bit too fiddly for example um these buildings i had to lower them in height um to because the model had uh, stuff that was um, too big. And um, the process of doing that took a while. So you can see here, my kind of village will leave the church for now. So the marketplace, complete with kind of stalls, lots of housing. So, you know, a lot of props just to give it a bit more life. So I'm not sure how, what kind of game this would uh, be good for. I mean, I, I initially thought an open 
open world type environment rather than a multiplayer map. There's a gargoyle overlooking the town. You know, here's some of that texture grass that I've painted here. So it's, um, you know, a very nice sky. And as I said, you can change the look of the level. I mean, I can switch it over and put it at night time. Overcast, sunset, night time, moon cloud. That just gives it a different look altogether. And again, you can change the brightness to suit so you know this is this has got potential um, there still needs a, a lot of work to be done just to make it a bit more user friendly um, the biggest issue I have with this is that there's no in-game tutorials to help beginners out you have to sort of go off off out of the game and read up on stuff if you want to get the most out of it. Um, there is a, quite a bit of learning involved. I mean, I've, I've just demonstrated how you can do the, the basics, but um, if you want to go more in depth, then yes, you do have to sort of start reading up on stuff and uh, discovering it that way. Or following uh, any of the tutorials that other people have made. So we enter the church, and it's got its own graveyard. Can even open that door there, enter the building. So yeah, this is um, pretty cool. I enjoyed making this. Um, it's, it's quite fun, quite addictive as well, just to sit here and create something. And... Um, Again, it's, it's another level just making that into a, an actual game, populating it with AI and getting that to work properly um, is a different thing altogether, which I've only basically sort of um, touched the surface. Um, so I'll, just, I'll see how, how it develops. But I mean, I'm quite happy with how this is panned out with all the props. It kind of looks like a, a, a small town, a medieval town. So, okay, that's Game Guru. There's obviously a lot more if you want to go in-depth. I mean, I can't really give it a review score because I don't have any um, prior knowledge of other programs like Unity or Unreal Engine of how they how easy they are. But in terms of uh, things like Project Spark and Far Cry 4, um, I would say it's, uh, it's on a similar level, but I found Far Cry 4 to be a lot more easy for people that just want to jump in and make something very quickly um, without having to mess around with um, too many options. Uh, I found that this was a bit more fiddly and a bit more complicated than that. But again, it offers you a lot more scope in the longer term. So, okay, I'm Rob Cram and thank you for watching.